Around 12 million households in the United Kingdom may be pushed into fuel poverty by October. Fuel poverty is defined as the condition of being unable to keep one's home adequately heated. It currently affects 6.5 million people in the country. This is the consequence of the rising energy price cap which the United Kingdom has been witnessing for a while now. According to the Office of Gas and Electricity Markets CEO Jonathan Brearley, the energy price cap is likely to soar to 2800 pounds in October, the highest ever cost. Ofgem is the government regulator for the electricity natural gas markets. The energy price cap is the maximum price which suppliers can charge customers for their energy costs. The price cap protects customers from short-term changes in prices and is calculated every 6 months. At the beginning of April, the energy price cap increased from 1277 pounds to 1971 pounds per year. Approximately 22 million people saw an annual increase on their energy bills of almost 700 pounds as a result of the price cap rise. Meanwhile, the UK government has promised a 400 pounds discount on their fuel bills in October. But considering the drastic rise in the energy price cap, this won't amount to much. So in October, we're told that we're going to see another price rise um, in the cost of fuel. Uh, looks as though it's going to go up by another nearly thousand pounds, and this is on top of seven hundred pound price rise that we saw um, in April. At the same time, we have inflation at a forty-year high. Um, we have that looking as though it's going to go even further, um, probably topping double digits um, by uh, the autumn as well. And we see price, we see wages falling way behind um, again. So this, in effect, is the the perfect storm um, for working class people. At the same time, we see energy companies saying that they um, are making record profits. We see um, the um, heads of those companies raking in massive bonuses. Uh, we have a, a government that um, really refuses, has refused for for months to do anything serious about this. We have an opposition, um, Labour opposition, that said it needed to have that the country needed to have a windfall tax um, on the energy company profits. Well, the Tories did that last week. Um, and it's really unclear now what Labour's policy is. The general cost of food and services covered in the consumer price index rate has gone up by 20% in April. Under the health and social care levy, national insurance was also increased in price by 1.25% on April 6th of this year. I'm leaving London. Uh, the cost of living in London has always been ridiculous uh, for like the last 10-15 years if you consider property prices. Inflation in property prices has been well above what the stated uh, RPR measure of inflation has been. It's been kind of 20-30% um, for poorer people. It's been 20-30%. It's been absolutely, it, it's an absolute crime. It's an economic crime that it's been allowed to happen. And the reason it's been allowed to happen is because the people in charge are all highly capitalised and so have benefited from it. While people who don't have houses um, have obviously been put at a massive disadvantage and are effectively becoming enslaved. to the economic system. Rents have gone up an estimated 35%, average house prices have gone up close to 50%, and food banks have been witnessing huge lines. We will see the new people are coming, even the people in the jobs, uh, people are still working and uh, they working full time and they still need to use the food banks because of the cost of living I, I would say because everything is gone up uh, we we finding it difficult to buy stuff because everything we don't have a imagination to cope with the demand meanwhile the boris johnson led tory government is attempting to place the entire onus of the cost of living crisis on the ongoing russia ukraine war this is a cover up of the disastrous implementation of neoliberal economic policies characterized by austerity measures and profiteering even amidst the pandemic and wars various groups including the people's assembly unite the union and the communist party of britain have already registered strong protests against the cost of living crisis so what is to be done about all of this well um frankly a windfall tax was okay as far as it went but it's nothing like 
what's needed. What is actually needed is um, nationalisation of the energy companies. We also need to see um, a wealth tax um, to um, halt um, the profiteering um, that's going on by um, the bosses of the energy companies and the energy companies themselves. So we need a two-pronged attack. We need nationalisation and we need a wealth tax, but also importantly, uh, we need an immediate and massive rise in pay for working class people. Now, we know that this isn't something that the uh, that the government or business is just going to turn around and do. This means that the trade union movement really needs to um, step up to the mark and go out and win uh, big pay rises um, for their members. It's the only way of being able to make sure that people can afford to put bread on the table and keep a roof over their heads. No one's going to do this for us. We have to do it ourselves. We can rely on legislation only so far, but in the end, it's going to require working class people to stand up and organise and do something um, to bring about a real fundamental change.